This is Coach Chick Austin welcoming you to Austin Field, home of the Lakeside Rams since 1949. There's no better place to be on Friday night than a high school football game. It's Friday night. Let's go around. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Lakeside Coaches Show. Once again, we're going to start off this week with Coach McBride. Coach McBride, thanks for sitting down with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so before we delve into this week, we actually want to go back a week or two ago. Uh, quite a bit of news about it. And an excitement about a new addition to your family, yeah. the Lakeside family. Yeah, we had a baby girl uh, the night we beat uh, Whitehall, and uh, she's doing well. A little over two weeks old now, and uh, uh, everybody's healthy, and, and uh, she's, she's doing well. That's, that's very exciting, and on the night of a win, no less. That's right. I got two victories in, in about five minutes. She was born within two or three minutes of the time the game was over, so uh, it, was a, it was a really cool night. So now we go to last week. It was another big win on the road, this time against the Queen. You know, with this fifth conference win, how is the outlook on the postseason right now? You know, we're, we've still got all our goals right in front of us, things that we want to do, being a uh, conference championship, undefeated, or right there in front of us. Uh, I was really proud of our guys Friday night taking a long road trip to the Queen. I thought uh, they were a very, very good football team and played really well at home. Um, and we got out there and just got after them uh, early, scored on the first play of the game, uh, got a turnover on the next kickoff, and, and really controlled the game from the very beginning. So I was proud of our, proud of our kids, and uh, um, it was a great, great road win. Who really had a peak performance from this Lakeside team? Um, you know, Dupree ran the ball well. Mike James ran the ball well. Both had long touchdown runs. Um, that always comes from good blocking up front with our offensive line. And our receivers are very um, uh, critical to that also. Um, defensively, Alex Stewart kind of had the MVP performance. He had um, several solo tackles and, uh, and quarterback pressures and, and sacks. Um, created some turnovers on special teams. Um, Torrent Davis created one. Uh, Judson Spellings may have gotten two, but uh, you know, overall, uh, good team performance. Yeah. You know, you talked about those big defensive plays. Were there any other big moments in that game that really stand out? Um, you know, that was really key for us, creating turnovers. I knew that it would be limited possessions of the way they, the offense that they ran and the offense that we run. It's just kind of limited possession there. But uh, for us, it's just uh, creating those turnovers, and, and we did a good job of that. So let's go back to roughly five weeks ago. Now we look back. The team was 0-3 at that point heading into conference play. You know, did you see it that you would win five games in a row? Uh, we knew we had a, a pretty good football team. We were just trying to figure out some key parts and, and some key uh, – uh, plug in some guys in some key uh, areas and uh, we did that and gained a little bit of confidence as as we grew through our preseason and uh, wish we'd have played a little bit better but been very proud of our guys uh, in conference play and and being undefeated at this point so now heading into this week's game you know this is what people are starting to call a marquee matchup it's between Lakeside and Watson Chapel the two undefeateds left in 5A South. You know, as a coach, how big of a game is this? It's very big for us. You know, historically, our our game with Chapel in the last few years has been for a conference championship or or a playoff berth, and uh, and no different this year. They're undefeated in conference, and we are also. We're both trying to uh, secure the number one seed, and that's going to happen this Friday, one way or the other. I'm glad that we're home. Um, it's going to be a, a a really special environment, and uh, it's kind of what we. What well, we do all the work for, all the hard work and all the year-long work is for opportunities like this, so it should be a special special game. Mm -hmm. Last year, Lakeside actually went to Watson Chapel and you know ruined their perfect season in conference play while they were at home. You think they're going to have the same thing on their mind coming into this I game? I think so. I think they'll be um, uh, ready to play. I think they'll be uh, coached well, and I think they have, um, uh, they'll have a good game plan, but I think the Rams will also. Who's really standing out right now? Is there standout players on? You know, they've got a sophomore quarterback that's growing each week and getting better and better and better. And uh, he's, he's a special player and will be a special player. Uh, offensively, they're very multiple. Um, they'll, they'll do lots of different things to try to get the ball into the end zone. They're very fast. 
Um, defensively, very, very strong physical football team. You know, they do things that kind of just say, hey, here we are, let's, let's play hard. And, and uh, they're not, they don't blitz you. They just kind of play good fundamental defense. And uh, for us, it's going to be, uh, we're going to have to stay on our blocks, sustain our blocks, and uh, every yard is going to be hard to come by. And, you know, speaking of defense, on defense, this week you're facing Devin Curry. You know, is he reminiscent of his brother? I think they're, he's a very good football player, you know. Um, they've got a lot of them, though. But he's a, he's a kid that you see on both sides of the ball. And when, when you see one pop up on both sides of the ball, that means they're, they're very important to their team. And he is one that is very important to them. Is there anything else we need to know heading into this week's matchup? No, just excited about a, a, another, another home game, game and, uh, and, and we're going to see all the fans, students out, and, and uh, let's, let's bring home a victory. victory. All right, well, thanks, thanks Coach, for sitting down with us this sir. week. Good luck this week. week. All right, thank you. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back with this week's special guest. guest. Do you talk to your family without really communicating? Our new Lennox Ultimate Comfort System communicates with each component of the system, which communicates with you at home or away, giving you the ultimate control and perfect air. Wouldn't it be nice if everything in your life worked that well together? Call Grisham Air Care for perfect air in your home. Grisham Air Care and Lennox, the ultimate home comfort team. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Welcome back to the Coaches Show, everyone. At this time, we're joined by our special guest, Coach Rockwell. Coach Rock, thanks for sitting All down right, with us. Thanks for having me. All right, so over the years, we've gotten to know Coach McBride pretty well, but this year we're getting to know his coaching staff a little bit more. Can you tell us more about you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm Garen Rockwell. Everybody calls me Coach Rock. You know, it's, it's easier than Garen. So uh, I, this is my fourth, going into my fourth season here at Lakeside. I'm originally from Texas. So uh, and uh, don't hold that against me, but <laughs> um, I've had a uh, a really really good time here in Hot Springs and uh, coaching the Lakeside Rams. So it's been a heck of an experience. Mm -hmm. High school football definitely a big deal down in Texas. You know, how does it compare to here? Uh, well, you know, I, football is football. I, I tell people all the time. You know, in Texas, they they put the money into <laughs> it. You know, with the big humongous. Uh, College-style stadiums for high school kids, and but you know it's it's great football in Arkansas, and uh, I played high school ball in Texas, and then I left high school and uh, went to University of Arkansas in Monticello, and I've been in Arkansas ever since. My wife is from Arkansas, and my two daughters are are Arkansans. Now me and my son, we're Texans, so <laughs> you know, so that's what I tell everybody, but. You know, as far as football, it's just it's just ball. It's some great players in Arkansas, like it is in Texas, and um, you can take any team from Arkansas and match them up in Texas, and it'll be a great battle. So, yeah. so now looking at this team this year here at Lakeside, do you guys maybe have a motto in that defensive unit or a phrase that you may want to go by? Uh, we live by the phrase on defense is just you know spot the ball and play the next play. You know, you you can't worry about um, you know, what happened on the next play or how big or how fast our opponents are. We're just going to spot the ball, tell the referee to spot the ball and play the next play and, and go as hard as we can, 110%, and, and that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about the players. Uh, starting off, Enrique Aon has been proven all year that it's not the size <laughs> of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. You know, what are your thoughts on his performance this year? I, I, I am just extremely proud of him because every week people try to pick on him and, you know, take advantage of his, his height, you know, or lack thereof. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, and they try to take advantage of him, but he just keeps fighting. And that's what we talk about, too. Just keep fighting and keep playing the next play, and, and that's what he does. I was, I was so proud of him when he made that interception uh, against Hope because – they were picking on him again, and he made them pay for it finally. And, uh, you know, that was a big, big moment for us as a defensive staff to see him mm -hmm. get that interception. So. You know, speaking of that 
interception in that game against Hope. That was one of the highlights. And one of the other highlights was when he came over to the sideline and met you with the backbone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we, we did a little, little, little back to back jump in the air chest bump type deal. I thought I was gonna knock him down, so <laughs> I didn't want to hit him too hard. So, but I was, I was extremely proud of him. So now we move on to Brandon Chambers. You know, we talked about it all year. Coach McBride's talked about senior leadership, and Brandon's name it seems always finds its way into the conversation. You know. How does Brandon lead on this defensive unit? Uh, I have to say that in this defensive unit this year, you know, Brandon Chambers is the leader, especially back there in the secondary. Uh, he has a lot of passion and a lot of heart and takes pride in his position. And he, he brings 110% every play. I mean, every play. Even if, he, if he, even if he messes up and goes the wrong way, he's doing it 110%. And, and I love that about him. Uh, he's been through the fire. And I, and I tell a lot of my defensive guys that, you know, being around me for so long, you've been through the fire. And, and that just means he's been battle tested and he's ready to go every week. Um, you know, you, you can tell as, as a cornerback, he has, uh, since he was a sophomore, has raised his level each year, his game each year. And we put him opposite of us on our opponent's sideline, you know, because he can handle it, you know. and, and and it wasn't like that in the beginning, but he's definitely improved himself, and I'm extremely proud of him and his leadership abilities this year. You spoke about him giving 110 percent on every play. Mm -hmm. You know, do you have a favorite 110 percent play from him this year? Uh, Magnolia. Uh, and if if, uh, if if anybody remembers that game, we're not playing well in the first half at all, and they're just running up and down the field on us, and he comes all the way from the backside and makes a touchdown saving tackle, which probably anybody else, it was a touchdown, but all the way from the backside, opposite side of the field, he runs down one of their fastest guys and makes a tackle for that, and that's just that just shows you the type of player he's become and the leadership ability. The kids recognize that, and, and they follow him. So now moving on to the bigger guys down on the front lines. Let's start off with Ryan Pelt. Yeah, Big Pelt. Big Pelt, man, is uh, from game one to now, he, he has improved tremendously uh, from, you know, Robinson to now. Uh, I, I'm extremely proud of him and what he's, what he's done. He's taken coaching from, from Coach Mo, which is the defensive line coach, and he's done a heck of a job. Extremely proud of him. Extremely proud of John Fuller. Um, he's another one of those defensive guys, but he's also an offensive guy. So that's, that puts a lot of pressure on him, uh, you know, playing both sides of the ball. And he's came in and just done a tremendous job, especially in that Whitehall game. Um, Landon Gray is another one, really uh, kind of undersized as far as weight, uh, but uh, we put a lot of pressure on him to get in there and mix it up with those big guys, and he does a great job with that. Logan Gardner is a senior, and his motor is really high. Undersized guy, but he gives you 110% effort every play. I'm, I'm extremely proud of our defensive front because, you know, in the very beginning, uh, it just it, we wasn't doing a good job up front, and they took coaching from Coach Mo and they got it fixed. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm extremely proud of our front. So. Yeah, another guy that's on defense a lot is uh, Michael James. Uh, we talked <laughs> to Landon Muldoon a few weeks ago, and he said that he was the hardest hitter on this team. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing about Mike James is um, this whole tailback thing he's doing now. You know, I, I was going to make him like the – Premier Mike Backer and everything on the defense, and then he got in and started running the ball, making touchdowns. So you know, I have to share him now. But he he loves contact. He's a physical kid, uh, and um, I'm glad we got him. I'm glad I don't have the game plan for him uh, on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. Real smart uh, football sense. So uh, glad we got him. So. Would you say he's better on one side of the ball, or is he really balanced out? Uh, this season, he's really balanced out. You know, I, I, he's taking on the responsibility of and the challenge of doing both because that's hard, you know, and especially that running back. He, he takes a pounding on the offensive side, and then he's running as fast as he can, and then when he come on defense and he'll make a couple of tackles. So he's uh, mentally and physically prepared himself to do that, and, and I'm, I'm extremely proud of him also. Yeah. 
And one of our other guys we're going to talk about is Landon Muldoon. So we have a little bit of a running story here on the show over the last couple weeks. Uh, yeah. It started out when we had Carson on the show. Mm -hmm. We gave him the situation where the game is on the line, Carson has the ball, and the only one standing in his way is Landon. Yeah. You know, who's going to take him down? Carson says he wins, but Landon <laughs> says it's the other way around. What are your thoughts? It, you know, those two, it, it's funny, man, because they have a little rivalry uh, with themselves. You know, they, they don't want one to get up on the other, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, also, they're related to Colt Housley, uh, and so... They got a little of that in them too, and you know they they they're aggressive kids, and you know it's surprising that they're twins, but they they love to compete, man. They love to go at each other, and um, I like that about them. Now, to answer your original question, you know I I don't know, you know uh, at the beginning of the year I would say Landon would take him, but you know these past couple of weeks Carson has caught the ball and like really punished people, so it was. <laughs> It would be, it would be a, uh, it would be a matchup. But if I had to put my money on somebody, I, I had to go with Landon. I had to go with Landon. I had to say Landon. Landon's gonna stop him, and that's just because I'm a, you know, they both play defense. But you know, it, I gotta go with the defense. We're gonna stop him. Stop him on the one yard line. Yo, get off the field. Let's go. So, yeah. So we're more and more serious now. You know, what are your thoughts on Landon and his abilities? Uh, Landon is another one of those kids, uh, kind of like Chambers, that has grown back there in the secondary. Uh, last year, I can remember um, <laughs> I would probably meet him halfway on the field and be yelling at him and telling him what he's doing wrong and all that, and he'd just say, yes, sir, and he'll go back out there and get it fixed. And so... Uh, you know, on a defensive note, you know, he lives by our philosophy, just spot the ball and play the next play and get better each day, and, and that's what he's done. And uh, he's a uh, he's an anchor. He plays rover for us, which that's our strong side safety, and he's done a great job out there. So I tell him all the time I really appreciate him. He's another one of those kids we talk about um, uh, going through the fire. So he's <laughs> he's he's been battle-tested and uh, – and you know, and you can tell on Fridays, you know, that he he cares about it and he's passionate about it. Mm -hmm. So now moving on, uh, Alex Stewart, you know, has been racking up the tackles all mm -hmm. year long. You know, how is it to have a player like that? that you know, you can rely on to get those tackles. Yeah, he's he's another one, um, uh, like Chambers and like Muldoon, just a sophomore. Uh, made a lot of mistakes as a sophomore. We tried to play him. Uh, built himself up on JV, and now he is the dude. He is the Sam backer, and he's waited a long time to do it, and he is he is showing. I think he had, uh, against D-Queen, 11 tackles, uh, like two sacks, four tackles for loss. I mean, he was everywhere. And so I'm extremely proud of, of him and, and what he's accomplished. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's racking up the tackles, man. When you look at this whole defensive unit, who would you say has been the most improved from the start of the season? Um, or maybe just even in their time in general? Well, you know, when you want to talk about this season, you know, one kid we hadn't talked about that has improved and helped us a ton is David Reagan-Hart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had an injury early at the Tiger position with uh, Logan Gower, um, which was going to be a tremendous Tiger for us, but he had a knee injury. And David, n not playing a lick of defense, just every once in a while come down on seven on seven and play with us. We threw him in there, and he's done a heck of a job. And uh, uh, you talk, want to talk about somebody that has improved from week one to now? Has to be has to be him as far as improvement on the defense. So we had the chance to sit down with him a few weeks ago here on the coach show. Definitely a special player. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really special. Really special. So is there anybody else that we've missed from this unit? Uh, you know, I, I just love all those guys. You know, you, you can talk about uh, Aaron Killian uh, and Mike Backer, this being his first year. Big, big shoes to fill after uh, Jack Henry Hill left. Um, you can talk about Reese Turner, uh, who's another one uh, that, you know, I'm so glad he decided to come and, and continue to play football with, with us. And uh, he filled in 
at the wheel backer spot when we had some uh, some issues going on right there, and he does a great job when Mike James needs a rest. Uh, Darikus Ferguson is another one uh, that has improved uh, every week and gotten better. Got an interception this mm -hmm. week. Should have had one against Hope, but um, he got one. Um, you know, uh, Fleming, uh, uh, Keelan Fleming is another one. Uh, that we put a lot of pressure on because he plays both ways, mm -hmm. uh, but he does a great job too as well. So uh, our, our whole defensive, you know, like I said, philosophy is just to keep going and keep playing and keep fighting, and and, and that's what these guys have done. So, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. It's definitely been an impressive last few weeks. Yes, it has. It has. So now let's flip the script. Okay, okay. let's say now you're an offensive coordinator. Okay. Would you want to face this defense that? You you have here? You know, I, I think about that every, every once in a while. Like, what do, what does the offensive coordinators think about, you know, our defense? So, you know, we, we put a lot of pressure and do a lot of blitzing and line up in a lot of different fronts. So, it, it would kind of drive you crazy a little bit, you know, because we do a lot of different stuff. Um, so, it, I think it makes uh, – People just a little nervous, you know, because we do so many different things. But also at the same time, you know, we're kind of undersized in a lot of spots. So, you know, I think sometimes they overlook us until we get out there, and then they're like, "Oh man, these guys are everywhere." So <laughs> it's the strategy that shows. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. So, but if I was the offensive coordinator, uh, yeah, it, it would concern me a little bit. You have to study a little bit, man. So, you know, yeah, to face us. Yeah. Would you say that this defensive unit is different from what it was at the beginning of the season? Oh, yes, most definitely. Most definitely. You know, uh, those first three games, we were still trying to find ourselves, you know, and, and learn just the fundamentals of playing defense. And um, I added a, a couple of new plays in, and, you know, that we've never done before, just kind of adding on to what we already have. And uh, that took a little bit. So. But, you know, we, we like the challenge. I like the challenge as a coach. Uh, uh, I demand that my players, you know, uh, step up to the challenge, and, and that's what they did. So. so I know you can't share too many specifics about this upcoming week against, you know, Watson Chapel, Chapel but Chapel, yeah. are there any plans to contain Omar Allen and Devin Curry? Yeah, you know, every week, you know, like I said, because we got a, you know, size disadvantage sometimes and, and, you know, kind of a speed disadvantage because Washington Chapel is really fast. They always are ever since I've been here. And, um, you know, that's our, that's our job to try to contain them and stop them, uh, create a few turnovers, get Coach McBride the ball back and let him do his thing on offense, you know, because I tell the kids all the time, if, if we can just contain them and hold them a little bit and get Coach McBride the ball back, he will score, you know, and, and, and we believe that defensively, that if we can get him the ball, he's going to score and help him. All right, so you have a lot of people looking up to you here at Lakeside. You know, your players, you've got future players coming. You know, what would you tell them is the biggest lesson you learned through this game of football? You know, the biggest uh, lesson that I've learned in football is it takes everybody, man. It takes everybody uh, to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You know, not just not one person, just not one coach or one player can, you know, turn a game around in football. You know, like in basketball, you know, they kind of can. But it takes all 11 on the field, offense and defense and special teams and coaches and trainers. And, you know, it, it takes the, the, the administration and it takes the band. It takes everybody to win a football game. You know, uh, it takes the fans. And and that's the biggest thing I've, I've learned about football. I've, I've been playing this game uh, since I was, you know, six years old, throwing the ball in, in the front yard by myself. And then... You know, my dad would come home and, and give me some pointers. And then, you know, I've been under some tremendous coaches and learned so much from them. And now I'm at this point with Coach McBride, and I've learned a lot from him. And the number one thing I've learned is that nobody by themselves can win a game. It just takes everybody. It takes the whole community. You know, it, it takes you having good people around you. And, 
and that's what I would tell anybody, you know, any future player, not even ones that I'm going to coach. If, if you want to get into football and be successful, use all the resources around you and, you know, take advantage of it. Going back, talking about your father, you know, has he influenced you today? <laughs> you know, helped you become who you yeah, are? Yeah, my, my dad, he, he, my dad, he's, he's tough, man. He's tough. He, he, he was not uh, soft on me and my sister. And I have a cousin that stayed with us that, that I call my brother. Um, my dad played at UCA in, in Conway. Uh, so he knows football. And so he's my biggest critic. And, you know, uh, a quick story, you know, we everybody knows how the Malvern game went, you know. And, we get up on them, and then second half, we can't tackle, you know, Demise Jamison. And, well, as soon as I come upstairs, my dad says, boy, you got to get somebody on that quarterback. <laughs> and I was like, I know, Daddy. I mean, and so, you know, it's, it's no pat on the back. It's no love. He's like, you got to get this done, you know. And we talk football every week. And um, But, you know, his, his tough love and his logic about life and his – uh, uh, his his willingness to fight every day, which he put that in us to wake up and fight every day, no matter what happens, just keep waking up in the morning and keep fighting, and, and you know that's what uh, that's what my dad taught me. So. Yeah. Well, that about wraps up our interview session. But before you go, we have a little bit of a tradition here All on right. the coaches show. It's our Ball of Fame. Anytime we have any guests here okay. in the studio, we have them sign it. So would you sign this? All right, we'll sign the Ball of Fame here, man. I can just sign anywhere. Just anywhere on the ball. Okay. There we go. Got quite a few guys from your unit on there this year. Yeah, we do. There we go. All right. Well, thanks again, Coach. All right, man. Thanks for, for sitting down me. with us this week. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Don't forget to come out and support the Rams this Friday night. But remember, if you can make it, you can catch it right here on Lakeside TV starting at 7 p.m. For now, this is Chase Hartzell signing off. Have a great week and go Rams. He's going to take the snap. He's going to try to take it up the middle here, and it's off to the races. Touchdown, Lakeside. Before you can find your potential, you first have to find your path. At National Park College, our mission is to help you do both with a university experience that's close to home. With career-focused education, help with job placement and a variety of programs to choose from, and a cost that's less than half of four-year universities, National Park College can put you on the path to a better education. Visit np.edu today and find your path.